Glimmering deep blue solar panels, carpet rooftops on Pakistan's largest cities, and dot the perimeters of houses in villages all across the country. Pakistan's solar boom has been remarkable. Here is what drove the most improbable solar boom we've ever seen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. It's great to have you with us. We've now done nearly 7,000 videos, many of them about remarkable stories like this. Glimmering deep blue solar panels dot the landscape in Pakistan. Home to more than 240 million people, Pakistan is experiencing one of the most rapid solar revolutions on the planet, even as it grapples with poverty and economic instability. The country has become a huge new market for solar as cheap Chinese solar panels have flooded in. It imported 17 gigawatts of solar panels in 2024, and that's just the ones we know about. That excludes all the black market solar that's flooded the market as well. That's more than double the previous year, making it the world's third biggest importer of solar panels, according to data from the climate think tank Ember. Pakistan's story, though, is completely unique, said Mustafa Amyad, program director at Renewables First, an energy think tank based in Islamabad. Solar has been adopted at a mass scale in countries including Vietnam and South Africa and Australia. But none have had the speed and scale that Pakistan has had, he said. There's one particular aspect fascinating experts. The solar boom is a grassroots revolution, and almost none of it is in the form of big solar farms. There is no policy push that is driving this. This is essentially people-led and market-driven. So as you can see here, this list, the countries that were ahead of Pakistan, they were countries who, that imported the majority of their solar from companies and, go and the government. We're talking solar farm level solar. But in Pakistan, that is really almost non-existent. Pakistan's solar story is not a straightforward good news story. It's complex, it's messy, and it has potential trouble ahead as the energy landscape changes radically and rapidly. But many analysts say what's happening there undermines an increasingly popular narrative that clean energy is unaffordable, unwanted, and can only succeed with large-scale government subsidies, which is utterly false. Contrary to the notion that renewables only thrive on subsidies or are forced onto the global south and onto the west, Pakistanis are actively choosing solar because it makes financial sense, said Harjit Singh, climate advocate and founding director of Satat Sampada Climate Foundation. And this is what I've been saying now for years. The solar revolution, not just solar, but the solar and battery revolution, has largely been driven by economics and logic. As the country grapples with severe and deadly heat waves, temperatures nudged toward 122 degrees Fahrenheit in April, there is also hope that access to solar can help people afford the cooling systems on which they increasingly rely to survive. Pakistan's solar boom is due to a perfect storm of factors, said Wakas Musa, chair of the Pakistan Solar Association and CEO of Hadron Solar. Chief among those are the tumbling cost of solar panels from China, coupled with sky-high electricity prices. Sky-high electricity prices have really meant Pakistanis, many of them, even the poor, have had really no choice. For most of them, it's actually much better for them to buy their own solar panels that continue to pay the crazy prices for electricity in the country. Unfortunately, because of the declining cost of these solar panels, and in addition, the improving energy performance, or you might say energy density, solar has come at the perfect time. Pakistan's electricity woes can be traced back to the 1990s when it entered into expensive power agreements, many tied to the US dollar, where producers were paid regardless of whether they produced electricity, said Asha Amirali, a research associate at the Center for Development Studies at the University of Bath. 
The sharp depreciation of the Pakistani rupee combined with falling electricity demand, in part due to the rise of solar, have pushed electricity prices upwards. Russia's war in Ukraine added an extra layer of pressure as gas prices increased at the same time. Electricity costs have shot up 155% over the last three years. In addition, grid electricity is unreliable with multi-hour blackouts common in parts of the country, meaning that businesses can't produce anything and they just have to shut down. Businesses and households able to afford it have turned to cheap solar. While precise data on the amount of solar installed is kind of hard to find, analysts estimate around 15 gigawatts was installed last year compared to peak electricity demand in the country of about 30 gigawatts. As you can see, solar makes up an enormous percentage of Pakistan's energy grid now. The scale is just mind boggling, said Dave Jones from Ember's Global Insights program. A Google Earth search of big cities, such as Islamabad, Karachi, or Lahore, reveals the sheer amount of solar, said Jenny Chase, a solar analyst with Bloomberg NEF. There are more solar panels than you'll see almost anywhere else in the world in terms of roof coverage, she said. An official from Pakistan's power division told CNN the government has to be given full credit for this boom, citing programs including zero tax on solar panels and a net metering system which allows people to send excess solar energy to the grid and currently accounts for around four gigawatts. But many analysts, they disagree pointing to the absence of large-scale government solar spending. The solar boom has been very bottom-up, Amwad said. It was essentially the people forcing markets to import more solar panels. And it's changing the way that Pakistanis think about electricity. Musa from the Pakistan Solar Association compares it to the rise of social media. In the same way, sites like TikTok and Instagram have allowed people to bypass traditional media and become publishers, the solar revolution is allowing Pakistanis to become electricity producers as well as consumers. Once you combine solar and batteries, suddenly all the power goes in the hands of consumers, Musa said. But uh, it's not all roses. There is not just upside here. There is some other challenges. Our grid is going to suffer, Musa said. There are concerns it will enter a death spiral where expensive electricity pushes people away from the grid and towards solar, reducing the revenue utilities get, leaving those still on the grid facing higher prices, which in turn pushes more people to solar. Now, you might see that as a good thing. I personally do. And in fact, many experts predict that in at least half of the world, Electricity grids will actually cease to exist on a mass scale like they do today. And people will simply produce their own power locally. The Pakistan Power Division official said the government may take appropriate but necessary measures to ensure the stability of the grid, but did not say what those might be. Could that be forcing people to actually use electricity from the grid instead of solar? I hope not. The solar boom is also driving a further wedge between Pakistan's rich and poor, said Amtrali. Solar is only available to those with deep enough pockets, he claims, and everybody else is still stuck on the extremely expensive, often extremely unreliable, dirty fossil fuel-based grid, the researcher said. I think Pakistan can only teach you what not to do right now. Now, I completely disagree with that because if we look at the historical prices of solar, 20 years ago, solar's, solar was expensive. It was Actually, the second most expensive form of electricity in the world. It's now by far the cheapest. And here's the thing. Solar panel prices are not standing still. Solar continues to get cheaper as the efficiency of solar panels continues to grow and their ability to last for more than 25 years, or at least I should say their longevity, continues to get better and better and better. Eventually, Everyone in Pakistan will be able to afford solar panels, even the poor. Now, I know that sounds insane, but just looking at the cost trajectory of solar, you'll see my point. 
Others take a more positive view than the experience I mentioned before. There are people being left behind, they say, but solar is not limited to the, to the rich. Clearly, as you can see, it's dotted across the countryside as well. People are using simple solar systems in areas that maybe get only a handful of hours of grid electricity a day, he said. Think the village tire shop bringing out a single solar panel every morning or the families that group to convert their diesel powered irrigation wells to solar. It's the perfect solution, even for places like Africa. This is what cheap solar means, Bloomberg NEF's Chase told CNN. It means people who have never had power before actually having power for the first time. Pakistan's solar boom may be imperfect, but some analysts say it holds broader lessons, especially for countries where grid electricity is expensive, unreliable, or both, or where there's simply no electricity. There are two crucial takeaways, said climate advocate Singh. Falling costs means renewables are often the most rational economic path away from fossil fuels, but Pakistan also underscores the absolute necessity of proactive planning and timely investment to ensure the grid can actually cope. Chase believes many countries may experience similar solar booms, but warned the solar market is entirely unpredictable. South Africa, for example, saw a rapid uptake of solar in 2023 when electricity supply was increasingly erratic and blackouts were common. It looked like the start of a solar boom to some analysts, but take up dropped when the government invested money in making the grid more robust and bringing down the prices of electricity. For now though, Pakistan has become a poster child for energy transition in the developing South. People are watching and the stakes are high. If the revolution goes wrong, it will affect the way solar is seen globally. The country must ensure its solar story becomes a fairy tale and not one that is talked about as an example of things not to do. And what I mean by this is many grids around the world are forcing their citizens to be part of their network. You cannot get off the grid and you are charged a fee simply for living. If Pakistan heads down that route because their own electricity network is so bad that people have turned to their own solar production instead, that would not be a positive. The real positive, the way to make this, this amazing story into a true fairy tale would be this. It would be for the government to embrace renewables as well. If they were to embrace solar and battery technology and get off fossil fuels, they could solve their own problems in much the way their citizens have been forced to. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Mm -hmm.